Okay, so I won't go through all of them again, but the answer was C, N, H, 3, H, 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 the only unshared pairs here at the top. So that would be the correct answer. Um, let's take this a step farther. What electron domain geometry would this be? Tell your lab partner. Okay, I heard someone whisper the answer. How are we doing? What do you think? What do we think? Tetrahedral, who agrees? Hopefully, good. The answer is it is tetrahedral because it has four electron domains, correct? All right, would its molecular geometry also be tetrahedral? No. The way to know that is there are non-bonding pairs. Remember, the molecular geometry and the electron domain geometry only match if everything is bonding. All right, so check your notes maybe and tell your lab partner what molecular geometry would this have. No. I'll tell you in a second. All right, do we have an answer? I heard Sam say half of the answer. Trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. All right, it is trigonal because it has three parts. There's the tri. All right, why is it pyramidal? Because it's not planar. Or T-shaped. All right, tetrahedral cannot have a T-shape. T-shape, you have to have five electron domains. This one only had four, so its only options are tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, or bent. Those are your only three options if it's four electron domains. Because it, it is hard to know which one it would be unless you know, okay, the maximum options are these three, which one does it match? All right. So the next thing is the thing I handed out to you. What, I, what I'd like you to do is see if you can label each one of these with one of these terms. Now, they might be repeated more than once, all right? And then it says at the bottom, for each shape, indicate the electron domains and the number of bonding and non-bonding electron pairs, because that will matter. Um, to answer a question just like Eileen just asked, you have to know this part to be able to get the exact right answer. So you take a minute, try and do this on your own. Um, try and do it first without your notes if you can, because then you'll know what you don't know. And it might be everything. If you can't do one single one of them, well then open up your notes and give it a shot. I crossed these two out because this is not something we are held accountable for in this class. Yep. Hold on. Hales, what's up? And I don't know, some of them are reasonable, meaning you can kind of look at the shape and think, all right, well, does that make a square, a triangle, um, or something? Um, this one was pretty easy. This was linear. All right. Then as far as the bonding and non-bonding, so this has one, two, three. Well, let's count the total electron domain. So I didn't know if I, I don't know what I told you to do. But one, two, three, four, five, correct? All right, so it has five. It's hard to write small with this font, but whatever. And then there was three non-bonding, and there were two bonding. The reason this can be useful to you is you now see, hey, if there's five, three, and two, it's going to form a linear structure. Okay, five electron domains three that were non-bonding, 
two that were bonding, we got a linear structure. We okay with that so far? All right. This one right here was also linear. Now, these, these are always going to be linear. And when I say these, what do I mean by that? Okay, straight ones, is, that's true. All right, diatomic or just what we call a binary compound, which is just a one-to-one -one thing. Okay, so, I mean, we can, we can look. You would look individually here, and you would say that this has two, and then you could say three bonding and one non-bonding. It, it really wouldn't matter. Because when we only have two things bonded to each other, we don't really go through this process because it is always a linear molecule. Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, we end up, hopefully everyone got this one right without their notes. Water is bent. It is bent because it comes from a tetrahedral electron domain. So it has four electron domains. All right. We call it bent because it has two bonding and two non-bonding pairs. When a tetrahedral electron domain, it has two bonding and two non-bonding, it will always form a bent structure. All right. Then we'll go up. This one, it's easier if you sort of look at it sideways, but we would call this one the seesaw. I can try. If I take this thing, oh, come on, Thomas. And I move it right here. You can sort of imagine maybe two people sitting right here. <laughs> it's, it's not drawn to scale. But you can sort of see it now. You have the two legs, and then the two arms come out that you sit on. You okay with that? All right. <laughs> but isn't it super small? Yes, it is. Thank you. Those were extremely small humans that we put on there. Um, all right. So it seesaw. How many electron domains? Five is correct. I don't know why I just did that. It has five electron domains. One, two, three, four, five. The bonding, there are one, two, three, four. Non-bonding is one. So now you can see when you have five, four, and one, you're going to have a seesaw molecular geometry. What do we call it when it's five, by the way? What's this electron geometry? Trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, if there was another thing here, we'd have the three, and then it would make like three pyramids. So trigonal, bipyramidal. Did I say three pyramids? I meant two. Sorry about that. Um, all right, coming down here, hopefully this was easy. It's three, so we call it tri something, and we call it trigonal planar. It's planar because there's not that extra pair to bend everything away. I have no idea. How, I do, is it ER spelled at the end? It's right. It's on here. Planar, I guess. Um, all right. So this has three electron domains. It has three bonding and zero non-bonding. So if these two equal each other, the electron domain geometry and the molecular geometry are always the same. We okay with that? Sorry. It's just getting worse. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now it's looking like one of their balloons from the other day. Um, all right. So who got that one right? Okay, well, that's good. All right, this one, what do we call this one? All right, octahedral. 
All right, it has one, two, three, four, five, six electron domains. I know it's it's dumb. If you do, I have one left. Okay, this is kind of tricky, but this is made out of six things, but it has eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then two more that I missed because they are there. All right. One, two, <laughs> I can never do this. Two, three, I missed that one. Four, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight sides. Right. There you go. Isaac can keep track. It's a double four-sided pyramid, as Sam puts it. Thank you. All right. So it's octahedral. That is correct. It has six electron domains, six bondings, zero non-bondings. When these equal each other, we have a happy face because the electron domain and molecular geometry are the same shape. All right, continuing on. Uh, up here, this is linear, correct? Because it has two bonding domains. All right, they're both, um, or electron domains, they're both bonding. It's going to be a linear structure. Um, all right, we call this bent. It is bent. It has three electron domains, two bonding, one non-bonding. When that happens, we have a straight line that ends up getting bent down because, remember, this occupies space, which repels those. That bends them. All right, what do we have here? Trigonal bipyramidal. All right, you can sort of see it, I think. Trigonal, because there's three things around this, this plane right here, but they form two pyramids to make it bipyramidal. All right, this one was another one where they match. So there was one, two, three, four, five electron domains, five bonding, zero non-bonding, so it matches the same molecular geometry and electron domain. Okay, what do we have here on phosphorus? Tetra. Do we care about these right here? Yeah, they're on the O. If we define this by O, then sure we would, but we don't right now. We're just looking at phosphorus. So this is tetrahedral. It's tetrahedral because it has four electron domains, one, two, three, four electron domains, which we've learned or should learn is tetrahedral, four bonding, zero non-bonding. We're ready to roll. All right, here is what we did on the practice problem. What do we, what do we call this? Trigonal pyramid. It's trigonal because it has... It's pyramidal because this non-bonding pair is bending the electrons away. It's forcing them to not all be on the same plane as they were before. All right, coming up here. This one's sort of tricky to see. I don't, I don't know, maybe. Um, this is called square pyramidal. It forms a square right there. Um, but then we have this other thing hanging off or this other thing hanging off. All right, if one of them ends up to be another atom, that's where we get a square pyramidal, okay? Square pyramidals come from how many electron domains? Six electron domains. How many of them are bonding? Five bonding, one non-bonding, square pyramidal. Okay, when I was your age, that one, for some reason, it never really clicked in my eye. I can see it now pretty easy. That's just me. All right, this one, really not that bad. What do we call this one? Square planar. The reason it is square is because it has the four parts. The reason it is planar is because this non-bonding pair pushes those away, but this non-bonding pair pushes those away the same amount so it keeps them aligned all on the same 
plane. All right, square planar results when we have six electron domains, which four are bonding and two are non-bonding. All right, and then finally we are here. What do we call this last one? T-shaped. This was my favorite my whole life because my name's Tom. All right, it's annoying that it's drawn this way, but you could draw it that way and that it would actually be a T. But whatever, that'd be too easy, right? All right, it's T-shaped because T-shapes come from how many? One, two, three, four, five electron domains. You have three bonding, two non-bonding, and that's when you end up with T-shape. Yeah, I hope it is, because um, this is super important. So the link here on the bottom, and when, if you do this online, it's right here, this sporkle.com slash game slash whatever. I have no idea what all that is, but it takes you there. Um, you'll need to know how to spell these right. So maybe keep this worksheet and just cover up the bottom. And then it just quizzes you on each one. You have to type them in. That's why you need to know how to spell them. Um, and you can practice that a thousand times on that website if you feel like it. This is a skill you need to possess and be confident in. Go ahead. The, the test is not going to have all of them, but there's going to be three or four. And you're going to have to draw the Lewis structure, tell me the electron domain, tell me the bonding, non-bonding, and then what the molecular structure is. Probably not. <laughs> How about I do one of those two, and then two that aren't those two? <laughs> more, people, more people would get water on I think for all these ideas, I will take them into consideration. Pretty sure I've already written it, so I'll just keep it how it is. Um, all right, so that the test is Thursday. Now, the follow-up question I got from that is, are we going to do anything Friday? The answer is yes, I plan to do stuff on Friday. What I'm going to do on Friday is explain what you have to do over the Christmas break. Because you, you'll have assignments over Christmas. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. You guys can all bring me coal for Christmas. All right? Or cola. <laughs> all right. So, you should come on Friday. All right. Here we go. For your test, this is a very important concept. It's not very hard, though. Yes, Weber. And you would count its electron domains. So it has one, two, three, four electron domains. That means this piece of this large molecule would be tetrahedral. Okay? Then you would move to the next one. This square is going to be way too big. So we'll just look right here. Come on, marker tool. You now have this carbon. I didn't circle it very well. That should go here too. How many electron domains does that have? Three. So this piece would be trigonal planar. And the next piece you would look at is the oxygen. The oxygen has how many electron domains? Four. Two of them are non-bonding, though, correct? So this part, it would be tetrahedral, but if we looked at the molecular, this one would be bent at the end. You with me? You just chop it up, look at each individual central atom, and then go from there. What's that? Why is this bent? OK. Um, M E. This would be ethanol. No, it wouldn't be that either. This is an. It's called an ester, and I don't have those memorized. Um. Okay. No. If this just had 
and the H, then you need to know that part. And it's just ethanol, and we'll talk about that. But when it has that extra O, it changes the rules on how to name. And that's organic chemistry. Um, those that want to be doctors, dentists, and nurses, you'll take a ton of organic. All right. This approach makes sense, especially because larger molecules tend to react at a particular site in the molecule. So this is our same thing that we had before. You'll notice this is tetrahedral. This is three, so it would be trigonal planar. And this was four with two non-bonding and bonding, so you'll notice that piece is bent. So you can sort of see the picture throughout the whole thing um, that we've been going through here. You all right with that? So uh, you have to do this on your exam. Okay? You have to take a large molecule and find the geometry of each individual central atom. That's an important skill. Okay, so this is how it looks on the test. So there's more than this, but this will be a good practice. So what we're looking for on this is I want you to draw the Lewis structure of C3H8. I want you to find the geometry of the central carbon atom. For this, let's change it to of each central carbon atom. So there's three of them. You with me? So you'd have three answers here. This is coming up later, and this is later in the notes as well. So just try these two right here. Take a minute. Do your best. All right, so I've put the easiest one up of the one you have to do on the test. It's easy because this is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, meaning there's no double bonds. The way you would know that, does anyone remember the weird thing I've taught you? This is 2x plus 2, and x is the number of carbons. This number is equal to this, then there are double or triple bonds, which means that the geometry will be symmetrical pretty much everywhere. Okay? Main, so it would be tetra, and it would be tetra, and it would be tetra. Are you okay with that? the difference in difficulty steps up when I change the number of H's. So if I put C3H6, now that implies we have a single bond. Or not a single bond, sorry. We have a <laughs> double bond. That was such smooth delivery. <laughs> now we've already drawn this one in our notes before. And this is the one where a few of you made it cyclical, um, cyclopropane. Um, we don't make a triangle in this class of C's. It is possible, I completely agree, but we are doing straight. So we had C, 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 H, 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 H. Does that affect the geometry of the carbon atoms? Yeah, that was a poor way to ask it, but it does change the geometry because if you look, how many hybrid orbitals here? Not hybrid orbital, sorry. That will come up. How many electron domains? Three. How many here? Three. How many here? Four. So this has a slightly different structure than the one before. Now guess what? The whole reason we care about this structure crap is because if it has a different structure, it's going to have different properties or chemical properties because it's going to react differently because of its shape. Um, all right. So, there's some random math. Okay, for the next six, no, four minutes, I'm not good at math sometimes, we're going to talk about polarity. Now, polarity can be found by um, subtracting electronegativity values, and you do have to do that on your test. Hopefully you remember that. We went over that practice problem. All right. But here we go, we, we're going to switch things a little bit. But just because a molecule possesses polar bonds does not mean the molecule as a whole will be polar. So carbon dioxide, even in normal chemistry, I lie all year and I tell them carbon dioxide is polar. And that's sort of the truth and sort of a lie. Carbon dioxide itself is a nonpolar substance. 
but it's composed of polar bonds. So that's kind of weird. But the reason why it's actually nonpolar overall is because polar, if you remember, is where the electrons pulled the one side more than the other. Are we okay with that? But in CO2, we have a linear molecule. And the electron is being pulled this way, which leaves this side positive-ish. But the electrons also be pulled that way, leaving this side positive. If you're pulling on something the same force both directions, does it really move? No. So each individual bond is polar here because of the electronegativity differences. Right here is great. Thank you. But the overall molecule itself will be nonpolar. Who's with me on that? Okay. Now, by adding the individual bond dipoles, one can determine the overall dipole moment of the molecule. So that's a little confusing-ish. Like, we don't have to get on that extreme detail. But all we're going to say now is we know O pulls H, and we know this is bent. All right? One pulls that way. One pulls that way. And then what we do is called vector addition. And that's, it can be really complicated, but it's not that bad. We take the head of one arrow, so this is this one, and then we put the tail of the other on it. And then the resulting vector would show you the overall dipole moment. That's why this becomes a two-sided molecule. The electrons are pulled this way and that way, or the resulting pull is straight up. You okay with that? Now, you don't have to do this. You just have to be able to, like, apply it and think, okay. So here we go. What we would do, all of these things have polar values, but we want to know if they're structure overall. This one's easy. The only dipole goes that way. So that one's polar. This one is nonpolar because you have a pull this way, this way, and this way. And if you add all of those, they cancel each other out. So the electron does not move. This is nonpolar. This way, this way, this way, and this way. They all go to zero. This one is polar. There's nothing to cancel them out. All right? This one is tricky. And we'll talk about this, I guess, tomorrow because the bell's going to ring. This is a structure that typically would give you something nonpolar, but you don't have symmetry in the atoms. Since chlorine is so much more electronegative than all of them, there is a slight dipole that way. You guys were awesome today.